except the man be born again of water and spirit. God says you can't get in the kingdom without it. Because that which is born of the flesh is of the flesh. But that which is born of the spirit is of the spirit. And Jesus says, don't trip because I said these things. You must be born again. He didn't say you might want to be. He didn't say do it if you can. He didn't say do it if you get around to it. He didn't say do it when you get yourself together. Jesus said it's a mandatory requirement for anybody that wants to see him in peace. That you must be born again. Here's what I want to tell you. When sinners, and we all have been sinners. When you trust in Christ as your Lord and Savior, we are all reborn supernaturally. Nicodemus asked this question, can a man be born again? Can he enter into his mother's womb again? Ain't no way in the world I get back up in Lula. Amen, somebody? Ain't no way in the world. Come on, somebody. I'm six foot four. Watch your mouth. 230 pounds. <laughs> I love you. Ain't no way I can go back up in my mother's womb. But well, how, how am I going to be born again? Well, we're talking about a spiritual birth. I'm talking about God has the ability to take you, watch this, and put you in his womb. I wish I had a church in here. And then let you come out of him. And here's the tricky part. You look the same, but you're not the same. That's why I don't like religion, because religion tries to change you on the outside. There are a lot of folks that look like they belong to God, don't belong to God. And there's a lot of people that don't look like they belong to God, and they belong to God. Half of the body of Christ is going to be shocked when they find out who's in heaven if they make it. What do you mean, Pastor? Because some of the folks that you think are going to make it, they're going to be standing right there at the pearly gates telling you, come on in. And some of the people that you know going to make it, you're going to search for them in all eternity and you won't find them. Why? Because God is the one that decides. And how does God decide? He decides by the contents of our hearts. I'm encouraging you today that, to believe that you can live this life. I'm tired of people being run out of church because they don't believe they can live this life because church folks won't tell the truth. Church folks won't give an honest representation. Church folks won't let them know that when you are reborn, you start life all over again. Y'all see, I, I bought out a high chair today, right? If we're reborn supernaturally, do you know what we become? Thank you, babies. You remember when you had a baby? You remember somebody else having a baby? Babies need a whole lot of help. I wish I had a church. Come on, if you got a baby right now, you know, you know you're sick of pampers and diapers and children boo-booing on themselves and, and you got to feed them. They need a whole lot of help in the beginning. And I'm taking a few minutes today, maybe longer than I thought I would, because I feel like there are people that are straying away because you feel like you can't live this life. The reason why you feel like you can't live this life is because you're measuring yourself by somebody else's image. I'm going to clap. I said a few weeks ago, God's got a plan for Snoop Dogg. And half the church shot me down. See, I ain't getting me any clap on that right there. No, God ain't got no plan for Snoop Dogg. Who are you to say who God got a plan for? I don't know what's wrong with the church when the secular world starts to try to embrace their spiritual aptitude. And because they don't meet our requirements, we feel like we got to put them down. I'm glad Snoop Dogg making gospel music. I don't care what y'all say. I still like that Snoop Dogg, yeah, dog. I still like that. <laughs> but I'm glad he in the studio talking about God. Folks say, well, pastor, that don't mean nothing. He ain't saved. His heart ain't in it. Let me tell you how smart God is. If God can get you messing around with him, I wish I had a church. If God can get you messing around with his word, something happens before you realize what has happened. And before you know it, change and rebirth is happening in your life. Mm-hmm. I say God got plans for Snoop Dogg. Oh, you see, God got plans for Cardi B. I ain't getting no clap over here. I ain't getting no clap. Y'all some Cardi B haters. You can't mess with me if you want it to. Y'all y'all be hating up in here, boy. Pastor, you must not have heard her songs. You must not have heard her lyrics. Okay, you looking at Cardi B right now. I'm looking at Cardi B when she get full of the Holy Ghost. Okay, I'm going to mess with some of y'all because some of y'all got a little stink spirit on your little face. And so I'm going to go ahead and punch you in your face. You are so hypocritical when you reject what I'm saying about God having a plan for Snoop, God having a plan for Cardi B, but you'll buy a ticket and go to their concert. How you like me now? Oh, you can separate it 
when you're sitting and listening to them, but your mind can't fathom the fact of them being a part of the body of Christ. Just like God changed you or transformed you, God got a plan. And if we was the real church, if we was the real church, we'd be praying for Cardi B. We'd be praying for Snoop Dogg. Y'all don't like this, but I don't care. I'm going to preach it. If we was the real church, but we got, we got too many folk want to criticize. Too many folk want to criticize people who are reaching for God. So God got a plan for everybody. How many of y'all believe that? I mean, I celebrate that. This should, this, this, should, this, should, this should preach about you. Many of God's children have a growth defect. <laughs> I want to find something that applies to you. Yeah, what do you mean, Pastor? Because many of us are not spiritually growing at the level we should based on the length of time we've been messing around with God. Let's, let me say it like that right now. You, you feel what I'm saying? Some of us are messing around with God for a long time. And I ain't talking about perfection because ain't nobody in this room perfect. Sure but man, if you can't look at your life and see some type of growth, then something's going on that you need to address because you don't want to fool yourself and think that you are growing the way you're supposed to be growing. Amen. When my mother fed me on a regular basis and gave me nutritional food, the shoes that she first put on my feet when I was born, I couldn't wear them anymore. And she had to go buy more shoes. Why? Not because she wanted to, but because my growth mandated it. Oh, Hold your seat. If you ain't had no new friends in five years, your growth ought to mandate that some of the people you used to walk with, you can't walk with them no more. Why? Because your growth mandates it. I, I, I wish I had a church in here. Okay. 1 Corinthians 13 and 11 backs me up. Maybe you'll believe the Bible. When I was a child, uh-oh, what roll, Raggy? When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. Man, I reasoned like a child. But when I became an adult, I no longer used childish ways. I'm going to give you three things that God wants you to address. Three childish things that God wants us to get rid of. Number one, he wants us to put away childish talk. Amen. Number one, for those taking notes, he wants us to put away the talk of a child. How many of you got children that just talk crazy? <laughs> you know, when I had my babies and they were born, each and every one of them, I remember sitting by their crib longing for them to speak. Real talk. I would sit by the crib saying, I wonder what his voice is going to sound like. Right. I would sit by the crib with my girls and say, I can't wait till they speak. I want to have a conversation with them. I want to know what their first words are going to be. And then here's the God heaven truth with all three of my kids. And I'm ashamed to tell you this. I went from longing for them to speak. To <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not the only one ever. To praying to God, they would shut their mouth. Amen, somebody? Because kids just go on and on and on and on about nothing. Why daddy? Why daddy? Why daddy? Why daddy? Why daddy? Why? And sometimes as believers, we have the talk of a child. Why? Because their mind is not developed enough to have real conversations that are of substance. Now something wrong because we got grown folks. Oh God. We got grown folk in here that don't know how to have a decent conversation. You ever meet somebody online? Oh, I wish I had a church. You meet them on Facebook, social media, Twitter, Snapchat. I mean, they, they there. And man, they are so impressive behind a computer screen. Then you meet them in person. And you'll be like, you cannot be the same person that I've been interacting with on social media. Because on social media, you got amazing quotes and you, you're very intelligent. But in person, they fail to develop the ability to communicate. And as a Christian believer, the older you get in Christ, the more you ought to be able to articulate what you believe, why you believe it, how much you love God, what you plan on doing in the... And you ain't gonna clap, amen, because your conversation is just about games. You gotta put away the teachings of a child. Since when I was a child, I talked like a child. When I was a child, I thought like a child. Where you getting that from, Pastor? What we think or how we think is 100% based on what we've been taught. And a lot of us have been taught improperly. Amen. A lot of us have been taught that in America, if you're black, you can't make it in America because it's hard at him for a pimp. 
my wisdom to you is quit being a pimp. Life gets really easy when you stop being a pimp. But pastor, there's a strike against us in this country because we come from Africa and we are sons and daughters of slaves. See, that's your thinking based on what you've been taught. You get around the right people and they'll tell you you can dominate every day. Amen. You get around the right people and they'll tell you that even though you don't have a father in your life, you can still do something amazing in spite of his absence. Come on, come on. But see, you're thinking, you're thinking, you got stinking thinking because of the way you've been taught. That's why you got to get in a place that teaches something that's different than what you've been taught your whole life. Since when I was a child, I thought like a child. Children have three issues that they struggle with. Their dreams, their desires, and their driftings. And I want to say that again because I need y'all to get notes on that. Somebody say their dreams, dreams. their desires, desires, and their what? Dreams. What are you trying to tell me, Pastor? Number one, let's talk about dreams. Children dream and want without a desire to work and earn. I'm going to say that again. I'm going to say that again. Children do what, Pastor? Children dream and they want. God, do they want. Wait till Christmas come around. They dream and they won't, watch this, without a desire to do what? You remember if you were a child or you remember when you were and you have children? Think about all the stuff they dream about. They never ask you, can they help pay for it? They never ask you, watch this, when it's time to pay the light bill. My kids have never said, you need any help with that? I've never had my kids open the refrigerator and say, hey, I gotta go get a job. Help y'all buy these groceries. Amen. But they always dream of eating. Amen, somebody? That's why some of y'all can't wait till the kids go back to school. Amen? You don't care about education. You just tired of your refrigerator being empty. Let's just tell the truth. Let's just tell the truth. You don't, get, you don't care about no education. You're like, are y'all eating a bar? I be glad y'all go back to school. Light bill go up. Electric, electricity bill go up. Food is running out. Why? Because you're ready for them to go back. Why? Because kids dream. But when you're grown, you know that if you got a dream, watch this, you're going to have to have a hustle. Yes, sir. And I know y'all don't like the word hustle because y'all religious, but hustle's not a bad word. It just means the attitude and the determination to work until you get whatever it is you're trying to get. Hustle is not a bad word. Amen, somebody? It's the same word as grinding. And some of y'all got to ask yourself, how is it that I got all these dreams, but I don't like to work? How is it I got all these dreams, but I want somebody to give me something? I don't want nobody to give me everything. Because the person that gives it to you is the person that has the right to control you. And it's the person that has the right to take it from you. You know, somebody say train up, train up a child in the way they should go. The they should go. Worst thing in the world is to have a parent that act like a child trying to raise a child. I, smoke that for a second. Yeah, puff, puff past that if you will. Amen, somebody? It's the worst thing in the world to be an adult. And, and I'm not going to look at some of y'all because some of y'all feel like I'm talking about you. And I am. Amen. It's the worst thing in the world for you to be an adult. You're an adult and you're still trying to act like a child. Get out, the, get out the club with your kids. Amen, somebody? Get out the club with your kids. It don't make no sense for you and your kids to drive to the club and all y'all get out and go in and say, something wrong with that problem. Okay, y'all don't like this right here. And some of your kids ask me to say that because they're tired of going to the club with you. You ever been in the club, look in the corner and see your mama? You be like, I'm gonna go home, I wanna go home. I'm... Mama is dropping it like it's hot. Can I go deeper? And I wanna throw this in your spirit. If you're easily distracted, this is for all of us. If you're easily distracted, you are easily destroyed. I'm gonna say that again, because you don't wanna miss that. If you're easily distracted, you're easily destroyed. This speaks to church members and Christians who can't stay in one church for a whole year. I ain't getting no clap on that. Amen. I got one ha-ha, one amen. That was it. That was it. This speaks to believers who jump from church to church to church to church because you don't like something in a church. Ain't no perfect church. Ain't no perfect pastor. If you hang around here long enough, I'm going to make you mad. Come on, somebody. If you go down to New Hope, they going to make you mad. If you go over there to the other church, somebody, you better get somewhere, get you some roots, amen, and show that you got the ability. So y'all want to clap on this. You can't grow if you keep on pucking yourself up, going here, there, and everywhere. But you're easily distracted. Oh, I'm going to go out there because they got free coffee. Oh, I'm finna go over to this church because they got Krispy Kreme donuts. I'm going to this other church because they got Krispy Kreme donuts and free coffee. Let me fast forward. God wants us, the third thing God wants us to put away is the taste of a child. God wants us to put away what? Taste. Where you get that from, Pastor? This is when I was a child, I reasoned like a child. Taste and reason go hand in hand. Vivian, bring me my candy off my desk. Who's got a small baby in here that I can borrow? 
Huh? Bring me a baby. Pastor Tish, I need some money. I thought I had my wallet in my pocket. I must have left it in my office. Bring me, give me some money. I need some money. Anybody pick up some money? Or oh, EBT card. Either one of them work. <laughs> what you got, dog? Oh, a player come out with a wad. Dance and make a dance. No, dog, give me. Yeah, all right. I, I want it all, man. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you, Vivian. Who got a baby? A little bit of baby. Oh, we got to get one out of the nursery? <laughs> come here, sweetie. Come here. And I need a baby. I need a baby out of the nursery. Uh, How you doing, sweetie? You doing all right? Here's five dollars. You're welcome. It ain't my money. Shoot. <laughs> Thank him. <laughs> now I want to give you an opportunity. Reason. Reason and taste go hand in hand. I want to give you an opportunity. Hold your five dollars up. Show the folks you, you got money. You just got paid. Now I want to give you a choice. You can get this jar of candy if you'll give me that five dollars. We'll swap it out. Don't y'all say nothing. What you want to do? Would you like to trade? You have done your job, mama. Maybe you didn't understand me. Maybe you don't understand me. This is a jar full of candy, lifesavers. They're very tasteful. They're delicious. They're really. She looked at me like, boy, stop. She's like, boy, stop. Seriously, you can get the whole glass, the glass included. If you'll just give me the $5 back, we'll swap out even trade. You're not interested? All right, then keep the $5. You're welcome. It's yours. Oh, thank you. Thank you, it's yours. Thank you, brother. Somebody say reason, reason. And, taste. and taste. When I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. I, now watch this, come here, come here, come here. Same situation. Just gonna show y'all something. Hey, baby girl. How you doing? Notice no conversation. Not a lot of talk. But reached out for the five. <laughs> Watch this. Mm, mm, mm. God, that's good. Right, is she, because she's looking at everything. Would you like some candy? Do you like a piece? Well, let's, let me get this and I'll give you this. <laughs> Black kids learn at an early age, don't they? <laughs> Had it been a white child, they'd be like him. Yeah. <laughs> Love y'all. <laughs> it's good. Would you like to hold? I'll, you see how she's looking at it? Oh, wait. See, she made the mistake a lot of y'all make. She has something that is worth more than what I'm offering. And while she's trying to hold on to it, she's steady reach. Not having the knowledge to understand, she has the power and the ability to buy this and so much more. I'll wait, I'll wait. And some of y'all are reaching for stuff that if you would take inventory of what God has given you, it ain't even worth your reach, it ain't worth your time, it ain't worth you responding back in a DM. I wish I had a church. But because you don't know what you have, you don't know who you are, you don't know what the value is that you possess. You reaching for candy when you can buy your own. That's why I respect any woman who has gotten to a place in her life well, she recognized, I don't need no man to pay my bills. I don't need no man to buy me an apartment. I don't need no man to get me no car. No, I don't need no man to do that for me because I can do it for my... I'm, I'm determined to get this money. Come on, baby, you can do it. Let me have this, and I'll give you this. Now, folks... I just showed you something that was sad. Really sad, church. See, the devil ain't gonna stop. At first, 
But because I kept on. Because I made it look delicious. She gave me the five. Hold your seat. And didn't even take all. Reached in and got two. And she just as happy as she want to be right now. And got two and gave me taste ruled her decision. The lack of knowledge caused her to give up something for nothing. I wish I had a church. Okay, some of y'all still not getting it. Today is the day we measure ourselves, ourselves and, and, and as an adult, I'm not even talking to our young folks, as an adult, you gotta ask yourself, is this me? Do I keep giving up what I have for something in exchange that don't even equal what I'm giving up? Do I keep settling for less? Getting mad because somebody offered me two lifesavers and I'm paying them $5 for it? Am I the person that needs to grow up and say, you know what? I'm going to hold on to what I have till I run into somebody that ain't trying to take from me. They trying to increase what I already got. You get them both today, baby. God bless you. Thank you. Here's my favorite part right here. But when I came an adult, I told you last Sunday, God has no interest in changing us. If you missed it, you need to go watch that message on Facebook. God ain't trying to change you because you can change and still be the same. God is interested in transforming us. And the Bible says that when I became, when I transformed into something greater than what I was, I no longer use childish ways. Can y'all say us a piece of rev revelation real quick? Look at this text. Say God's plan, God's plan is, for is for me. Don't miss this. Say God's plan, God's plan is, for is for me. Don't miss it because it's good. Now say God's plan, God's plan is, for me is for me to get to, to, get to my second win. My second win. Get on the bus. The first win talks about when you was a child. But then there's a second win that talks about when you are an adult. And God says, if you really want to understand what I have for you, you got to understand that you got to become mature. You got to become decisive. You got to understand that my job is more than a something that gives me a paycheck to pay my bills. No, my reasoning is my job gives me resources to reinvest in myself so that if I don't want to work for that company, one day I can position myself to do my own thing. Amen. Come on, come on, come on, come on. As a child, as a child, as a child, when you are a child, you want friendship with just anybody because you want somebody to be your friend. But when you become a mature adult, you be like, you know what? No new friends. I don't need no new friends. If they're not going to support me, if they're not going to be a, a part of my plan for success, why? Because your thinking changes. Why? Because your growth changes and your development changes. And God is calling us to understand is not his plan for us to always be children. It's God's plan for us to grow up and be able to take some things it's God's plan for us to not just be fed, but it's God's plan for us to feed somebody. Yeah. If you're always the person in need, that's not God's plan. Yeah. If you're always the person with your hand out, that's not God's plan. God's plan is for you to be able to bless somebody else. Yeah. God's plan is for you to be able to pay somebody else's way. God's plan is for you to be able to put food on somebody else's table. But if you're a child, you walk around like this all the time. And God is calling us to get out of the baby chair and get into the adult chair because a baby can't help nobody do nothing. Yeah. Ain't nothing sweeter when the child that you raised your whole life reaches a place where they can wash dishes. Oh. Ain't nothing sweeter than the child whose clothes you used to wash now washes their own clothes. I know some of y'all looking crazy now. Yeah. Ain't nothing sweeter when that child can drive you somewhere. Oh, Praise good you. God Almighty. Yeah. But if you keep babying that child, that child will never fully develop. Hold your seat. You want to know why God allows hard times? You want to know why God don't always get you out every time you holler? 
Cause God's not trying to baby you, God's trying to build you, God's trying to develop you, God's trying to make you tough. Hold your seat, hold your seat. God's trying to do to you what my daddy did to me. My daddy raised us in such a way that when we turned 19 years old, we couldn't wait to get out of his house. We ain't gonna get no clap now. Milton made it clear. I want you out of here as soon as possible. Milton made it clear. Don't eat nothing you ain't bought without asking for. The worst whipping I got was when I ate some ice cream that I did not buy. Drunk some Kool-Aid that I did not make. And I started having to ask, can I get some Kool-Aid? You say, your parents were mean. No, my daddy wanted me to be un... Oh, shucks, y'all ain't gonna get it. My daddy wanted me to be uncomfortable. And that's why that job will not ever, ever satisfy you. God don't intend for you to work in a place where folks don't appreciate you. God don't intend for you to work in a place where people underpay you. That paycheck is just a period in your life. Don't you ever get satisfied with minimum wage. You ought to look at your paycheck and get mad if it don't match what you worth. And be like, you know what? I ain't gonna stay here. I don't know where I'm gonna go, but I know this is not my destiny. But some of y'all get comfortable in some of the lowest places. And what God does, he keeps making you uncomfortable. The eagle does the same thing when it has a baby. That eagle builds a beautiful nest for the egg's protection. But when that baby hatches that egg, the eagle watches that baby. And most of the, most of the eaglets, you know what they do? They be like, I gotta go. But every now and then, Emmanuel, there's always one. There's always one who doesn't want to leave the nest. Well, that, that, that mother eagle doesn't say, you can stay with me. I ain't got no problem, Pastor, with my kids staying with me as long as they want to. I don't want to look at nobody right now. <laughs> ain't nothing wrong with my son being 50, staying in my basement. I like to keep my kids close to me, Pastor. And I don't care what you say. Something is functionally wrong. When a full grown adult, hold your seat, does not desire their own space. Something is mentally wrong. You don't have to clap. Somebody got to teach y'all because y'all think this mess is normal. <laughs> grown folk need their own space. And if your mind is wide, right, even if you can't afford it, God knows you pray for it. Every day, you want it. Every single, y'all ain't gonna clap on that, that's all right. That's because you're still doing childish ways. I don't want nobody to take care of me. I like to take care of myself. I like hitting the light switch and it come on because I paid that bill. I like going to the grocery store, buying groceries, looking at the fridge and saying, I bought these groceries. I know some of y'all don't care about this. That's why if you own welfare, if you own welfare, I want you to get a desire to get off it. Yeah. You don't have to clap. Listen, that's cool. If you own WIC, have a desire to get off it. I was on welfare. I was on WIC. But we used to sell food stamps. I hope the statute of limitations has run out. Amen. Y'all know we come on. I ain't the only one sold food stamps. You ain't going to judge me in here now. You're not going to judge. That's one thing you ain't going to do. What you ain't going to do is you ain't going to judge me up here. That's what you ain't going to do. I hustled. I hustled doing wrong things. Used to steal people gas out their car. Probably stole some from y'all. We get a water hose. I'm trying to show you some things. We get a water hose, cut it. Don't me and Robin have stole some gas. And, we, and late at night, when it's dark, while you sleeping, slide that water hose in there. Give me a kiss. Oh yeah, I got some in my mouth. Get it flowing in the guard, get, get it flowing in the gas can, go to the next house. Till I got me several gas can. Y'all, y'all talk about me. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Used to walk in the store and steal. Like it was free. I done stole pork chops. I done stole steaks. One time I stole a whole ham. I'm just gonna tell them myself. I stole a whole butterball. I stole a whole ham, y'all. Hey boy, how you steal a ham? I ain't gonna tell you. Pastor, what does this have to do with your message? When I was a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child, I talked like a child. But when I became a man, after having been arrested, 
I gotta put that in there. After having been arrested, I decided, hold your seat, I gotta close, that that was not the life that I wanted, hold your seat, for the rest of my life. I'm preaching to somebody right now that's got to make a change. I'm preaching to somebody right now, if you don't change, you're going to end up in the penitentiary. I'm teaching somebody right now, if you don't change, you're going to wind up in a bad situation with nobody else to blame. God has given us grace for this stage. God has given us grace for the stilling stage. I wish I had a church, because some of y'all are supposed to be locked up right now. I ain't the only one done stole. And God keeps letting you get away. Other folk get caught. Other folk go to jail, but you get away. God has given some of y'all grace. You keep sleeping here, there, and everywhere. The other folks scratching and you still walk around like, I don't know what, I'm just, I'm, I'm blessed. No, you ain't blessed. God's giving you grace. All the folks catching stuff that, that, that ain't no cure for. And you walk around talking about, I sure am lucky. No, no, God's giving you grace. But you let me tell you something. Grace will run out on you. Nobody wants to... I'm preaching to somebody that's got to recognize God's got a plan, but God's insurance plan only covers you in this position for a limited amount of time. It's quiet now. It's quiet in here now. God got grace for all them bad relationships you've been in. Thank you. But after a while, you ought to learn some stuff over here. Y'all ain't gonna clap. Ain't nobody saying it over here. So he covered you. I know your heart was broken. You thought you was going to die. Couldn't sleep without him. Couldn't eat without him. Without him in your life. You couldn't go on. Come on. I, know I heard the whole song. <laughs> so God let you go through it. He gave you grace. Hopefully so that you have a desire to want to get out of this chair. <laughs> so I have anybody that's starting to figure it out. That God's plan is for you to grow up. Here's why you got to grow up, and I'm going to leave y'all alone. Y'all been a great audience. When you grow up, the chair you used to sit in as a baby has something for you. There's certain things you can't get from God. I'll even say it better. There's certain keys you can't get from God till you grow up. Oh, help him, Holy Ghost. Help him, Holy Ghost. Dick, I always thought my problem was I needed more money. And I used to say, if I had more money, I could do more things. And God told me, no, your problem is not money. Your problem is money management. You busy trying to look good, and your light's going to get cut off next week. Uh, that's, just, that's just five of us. You busy out buying stuff you don't need instead of taking care of the things you do need. You out there trying to keep up with the Joneses when you know your money ain't long and strong like this. And when I learned that the problem was I needed more, I needed money management, I grew out of this chair and God gave me, watch this, He gave me the key. One thing I know about kids and babies and children, it ain't a child in here that's got real keys. That's all right. That's all right, I'm, I'm done. It ain't a child in here, go back to the nursery, ain't now one of them children got keys to the house they live in. Ain't now one of them children got keys to the car they drove in. Now, what they might have, and this is what some of y'all have, you got play play keys. Made by Mattel, made out of plastic. Look like the real thing, I'm preaching up in here but won't unlock nothing, why? Because you aren't mature enough to receive the keys to real things, why? Because you don't have any real growth. If you want God to give you the keys to unlock finances, relationships, careers, whatever's locked up in your life, you gotta abandon this and say, God, I'm ready to grow up. I'm tired of being selfish. I'm tired of just thinking about myself. I'm tired of always having my hand up. God, I want the keys and I'm willing to get out the baby chair. I'm willing to put away childish things. Give God praise if you got it. I got the keys, man. I got the keys, 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 keys. I got the keys. Major key alert. I got the keys. Do you want the keys? Grow up. Do you want the keys? Grow up. That means you gotta get rid of the pacifier. You gotta get out of the pampers. And you got to stop playing around in the playpen. How many of y'all want the keys? 
It's God's plan for you to have the keys. Hear me today. It's God's plan for you to have the keys. But you got to grow up.